What's up everyone, my name is Biku and I'm back with this thing. Um, if you watched my previous video, you probably would have seen me talking about this and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on what I spoke about in the previous video again in a little bit. But this is just a quick video which to show kind of the updates that I've made to this 3D printer, or at least it's, I suppose technically it's done a print, so I can call it a 3D printer now. So the main thing I wanted to touch on is the bed. So this up here is kind of your standard um, MakerBot-ish style configuration where you've got a, a stationary Y-axis, in this case it's the Y, sorry, Z-axis. You've got a stationary Z-axis that moves the that moves the, the print head left and right, and then you've got a Y-axis here that moves with the Z-axis that moves the print head in the Y direction. That's fairly standard. It's not the best. I could have done, I could have done an HBOT or Core XY or something like that, but this was a little bit more simple, especially considering building just on extrusion. I may upgrade it to a to a Core XY or an HBOT someday, but for now this is fine. But the main thing that I'm actually quite proud of and is working quite well is the bed. So the bed, you can see this is a tiny bed for the size of the printer itself but this is just the bed that i had um, it'll probably i'll probably upgrade to a 300 mil bed eventually but for now 200 mil bed is fine this is just some pcb material that i sandwiched together and then there's a heater pad underneath but it's not connected right now so but in terms of how the bed moves um this is actually kind of taken inspiration from how this y-axis moves where there's a belt here that connects to a pulley. Excuse the the just normal stainless rods. Not all of the rods are chrome rods right now because this is just testing, but the motor turns a pulley, which then is connected to another shaft on either side, which is in turn connected to the back, which is connected to both ends of the Y-axis. That's what makes it move evenly. You've effectively got it locked together so that it all moves in one in one synchronous movement. So the bed is set up similarly. So you can see there's a motor down there that's connected with a belt to a pulley that is connected to a rod here which has belts that go to another rod here which in turn connects all four corners of the bed to belts and then each belt just has a pulley at the top so that means that when the bed moves it moves up and down effectively each corner is moved up and down at the exact same rate um, i chose to do this because i chose to do this because I found trying to replicate your kind of Ultimaker um, bed movement system where the bed has one single, uh, one single lead screw that's kind of at the back in the middle and then two bearings. I found trying to replicate that with the parts that you can sort of easily come across similar to these over here. Okay, these are bigger, but to these. It doesn't work very well. Your bed, and I've, I've done a couple of them and the same thing has happened on all of them. The bed tends to wobble up and down because these bearings aren't too great. They're from China, they're whatever. They still go up and down smoothly, but they've got quite a bit of play. So your bed would tend to kind of wobble up and down. That's no good. So this way, let me show you. The bed moves up and down incredibly smoothly. And same thing going back down. Not too bad. So that's the updates I've made on this. Um, for now, the 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 
the big goal at the end of all this is to have this be a tool changer but i haven't quite gotten around to designing the tool changer mechanism part of it yet so right now this has got a um, a dual extrusion uh, block on it although right now as you can see there's only one nozzle coming out the extruder mode is just here but the goal is to have it have two nozzles and then eventually have it be able to extrude or sorry the goal is to eventually have it be able to tool change possibly on either side i need to get a duet board which with the with the expansion board to be able to do that because i'll need like 10 motors at that point with how many with how many tool heads i ideally want to have so that's a bit of a in the future kind of goal right now i've never had a printer with dual extrusion so it'll be good to have a printer with dual extrusion so that's a bit of an update on this thing and i wanted to touch up on my previous video um i had a lot of people and if you commented thank you for the comment but i had a lot of people commenting when i was saying that you shouldn't get discouraged by um, you know, the new fancy 3D printers and feeling like you could never build something as good. People were commenting a lot saying that they just want their printer as a workhorse. They wanted to print and do things. That's great. If you've got a printer that does that, awesome. Um, I'm glad, I'm happy, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> the people who I was talking to were the people like me who want to build their own and were feeling like there was no point because you're never going to be able to build anything comparable to what you can buy. Um, and this still probably doesn't compare to a Prusa XL or a um, Bamboo Lab or anything like that. But this is still, I, one, can't afford a Bamboo Lab or a Prusa XL. Those things are ludicrous, especially if you consider living in countries that are not the US or European countries. The exchange rate is brutal. I can build this piecemeal over a couple months and have a good, well-functioning 3D printer that can do everything I need to do without spending as much and also expanding on my skills, being able to prove to myself that I can do this. So if you are feeling stuck in a project, I've been stuck on this project for quite a while, probably I'd say about a year, get back into it, you can do it, you can carry on, even though right now this is a mess of wires, and I do have nice and fancy Capricorn PTFE tubing, but there's just a mess of wires and the controller board is just open, it's some cheap controller board, but I mean, hey, it's getting there. Yeah, one interesting thing about, about this this printer uses a inductive probe. Where is it? Where is it? There you go. This printer uses an inductive probe. Focus. An inductive probe to actually do the Z measurements and one th or to do the, the, the Z end stop. And one thing I've noticed is that the Marlin software has come a long way. I haven't touched Marlin since about probably 2017, 2016, when I flashed my last 3D printer and that thing has just carried on going. So I haven't had any need to try and use Marlin uh, 2.0. But when I started to do this one and started to work around the kind of limitations that I'd put on myself, one thing I realized was having a bed that's much smaller than your overall print area this thing right now has a print area of about three or sorry a movement area of about 300 by 300 by about 300. having your bed be smaller than your print area especially when you've got an offset z probe for bed leveling means that i can move with my z probe to any points on this bed left or right um, being able to map out the whole bed. You can do a similar thing if you put a, a sensor in your actual nozzle. I don't have that, I've got a Z probe. One thing that's really cool is that when this thing is in turn position, the Z probe actually isn't over where the bed is. So 
bit of research, you can actually set a safe homing point for Z so that it'll move, and I can show you, the printer will move into a specific position that you tell it to so that it knows that it's not going to crash into anything when it homes Z. See there, moved into what is for the Z probe. Oh no. I haven't changed the homing feed rate. So you can see the nozzle is not actually in the middle of the bed. The Z probe is what is in the middle of the bed. And there you go. You can see the little red light there from the inductive probe. Cool. Thank you.